<laughs> Mouth. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing today? Woo! All right, all right, all right. Thank you very much for coming out to our panel. This is how to combine cosplay and comics, but we're going to broaden a little bit today, too, to talk to you about how to build a cosplay community. Specifically, we have cultivated a thriving cosplay community on the Space Coast of Florida through comics, YouTube, and through our events related to cosplay within the community. So before we get started, let us do introductions. My name is Jason, and I am the executive producer of the YouTube channel known as Make Em Laugh Films. We do a lot of different cosplay characters from Marvel and DC. We make a lot of skits, parodies of existing movies, and just random sketches. And to my side is Peter Papas, owner of Viera Comics, which is based on the Space Coast in Florida here. Hi guys, welcome. I took a picture with you yesterday. Yeah, yeah. posted it in the sign. Oh cool, I'll have to look for it. Um, yeah, I'm Peter Pappas. I own uh, Viera Comics uh, in Melbourne, Florida. I moved down here from New Jersey uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago now, and two years ago I started Viera Comics. And uh, I had wanted to uh, make the store different, and I just didn't know how at the time. And um, you know, I, I went to uh, um, a couple of conventions, and I just loved cosplay. And I said, you know, that's people love getting pictures taken of characters, and cosplay is so much fun. So, and I just figured that was the route I was going to go. I didn't know what to do or how to do it, but I just knew that's what I wanted to do. And. Um, Jason was one of the first people I ever saw. He was at um, a con and he actually took the, he was cosplaying uh, J. Jonah Jameson and he took the microphone away from an actual news reporter from Orlando and started interviewing her. And I just thought that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. And uh, I said to myself, you know, mental note, gotta find that guy, gotta introduce myself to him. And, uh, and I did, through Facebook, we, we exchanged messages, we met, and uh, he started coming to uh, the shop, and uh, we did an event around Halloween together, and the rest uh, was uh, cosplay history, so to speak. Uh, moving down here to Florida, I knew that I wanted to find like-minded people to network with, to do cosplay events, and to continue making my YouTube comedy. So yeah, I just wanted to figure out a way to bring people together, um, create a community of our own, if you will. Um, since it wasn't too strong at that time. And as Peter said, when, once we linked up, that's when it really started to take off. So we, we filmed the Batman vs. Superman parody, uh, first and foremost. Actually, we collaborated first um, for a holiday parade. Um, that was actually the first event in uh, our local community, Viera, where cosplay characters appeared. And then from there, we started creating different themed events at the comic book shop. We went on to make a Deadpool day where kids and families could come and meet Deadpool. I was dressed up as uh, Deadpool that day for different photo ops. And from there, we just cultivated uh, Marvel and DC um, superhero themed days on a monthly basis on average, um, as well as different cosplay parties. We have photo shoots that take place where we have a real-time photo editor work on whatever uh, piece you want. We want to make um, your cosplay character be in front of a famous background. We can certainly do that for you. And then we provide the photo equipment or we invite uh, photographers photographers in the community to come to it. Um, really, um, we started out with making these cosplay themed events, but over the course of the past couple of years, they've kind of evolved into mini comic cons of their own. Because we bring cosplayers together, we brought in um, some celebrities actually too. We had that wrestler coming. Yeah, sure. Nikolai Volkov. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in a few weeks, we're gonna have uh, uh, some non-cosplay guests like Amy Sweezy, a, a big uh, uh, local celebrity in Orlando, coming to the store too to help us. And we'll probably be cosplaying when she's there, just to give it a little bit of extra fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then to further get the word out about the shop's events, we, we're always rolling with our video camera, rolling right now to make a new video to post on the YouTube channel, make them laugh films, always taking photos of the events, blasting it across the different social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, to let people know, like-minded people, if they don't want to wait till the next big convention hits, uh, such as Megacon Tampa or hitting up Megacon Orlando, they can most certainly come to Viera Comics, get their uh, cosplay fix, get their photo shoots uh, taken care of at that time. Sure. See, the, the number one problem for a cosplayer, and uh, we recognize this very quickly, is um, you have these great costumes or cosplays or whatnot, 
and uh, the only place you usually uh, historically could wear them as uh, at where were cons, comic conventions. And the problem is there aren't that many comic conventions. And another problem is a lot of them are far away or they're very expensive. So the whole point of building your own cosplay community is to make events that are free and attainable to everybody and make cosplay attainable to everybody. And that's what we've been doing. We've, 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 we're fortunate because we have the comic shop as a central location. So one route you could go is to go to your local comic shop and say, hey guys, would you be interested in doing um, a cosplay day on a Saturday? And, and we'll get together as many cosplayers as we can. You can advertise on your Facebook that you're gonna have characters for pictures and, and, and that sort of thing. And they'll probably be really into it. They'll probably really want to do it. I'd be shocked if they weren't. Um, they may not want to do it once a month or twice a month like we do it, or sometimes thrice a month like we do it, or f four times a month like we do it sometimes. <laughs> but they'll probably want to do it at least once every once in a while. So that's one route you can go, and um, and and to start that, if you have don't already have like a, a, a Facebook group locally, that's the first thing you should be doing. Maybe start like let's say you live in Tampa Bay, you could start a Tampa Bay cosplay group or something along those lines. And you'd be surprised how many people would gravitate towards that and find it. And then you guys could start talking about it and posting your cosplays and saying, where would you like to meet up? Let's do a photo shoot, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe do a photo shoot at the local park or come together and organize a charity event for the community. We've done different um, fundraisers, uh, like the Superhero 5K, it was a charity to end child abuse. We've also partnered up with local restaurants like Uno's for similar causes. Uh, like a police appreciation day, for instance. Then that way, you're, you know, you're putting goodwill back into the community. By the same, but at the same time, you're participating in those events that you and those like-minded people in the community um, enjoy, and you get to express yourself through those characters. Then, mm -hmm. and if if the the park doesn't work or the comic shop is just doesn't want to do it, and you're you're having trouble, there's always a way. A school library would be interested, or like a public library would, would very much be interested in something like that. Um, what were some other ones? Hospitals. We, hospitals um, would definitely be interested. In like um, you're always seeing those different causes where um, you know Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, the entire Justice League. They're visiting sick children in the hospital. That's another great avenue avenue to take. And, um, usually those stories pick up more momentum pretty quickly, so um, yeah, your community will definitely grow at a faster rate doing um, such events like that, charity events. Sure, and we, between the two of us, know literally hundreds of cosplayers in our area, between uh, Melbourne, where we're located, and Orlando, and um, we can put up an event, and sometimes we can only get 10 people, or 15, you know, and that's, and we have a lot of pull in the community. So don't be discouraged if you do something and only two or three people show up. People are busy, people work on the weekend sometimes. Or a hurricane will come through yeah. and ruin everyone's plans for the next month or so. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this convention would have been a lot busier if it wasn't for the hurricane. Um, not that it's not, it's awesome, but you can tell, definitely tell it's got a different feel to it than uh, a normal co big convention. So yeah. yeah, just keep at it, you know, don't be discouraged by numbers because uh, it, the more you do, the more the more people you will be drawing, that sort of thing. It's going to snowball eventually. When we did the Deadpool day, I was the only cosplayer. Actually, Bob came as uh, Deadpool yeah. briefly as and well. And a lady death did and show up. And a lady up. death, yeah, came. For we, which we didn't even day. invite. She just saw that we were yeah. in Deadpool, which <laughs> was cool. Death that, on that, me. That was, the, that was the, the, when we first noticed that if you put up an event, people will come. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But then it snowballs over time. Um, some of our more successful day um, events, like um, Batman Day or the two-year anniversary for the comic book shop, then you know dozens upon dozens of cosplayers have been coming to those recent events. Or the cosplay party photo shoot that was wildly our most successful day. And the best part of our last Batman Day was there was Dick at it. Me, yeah. Nightwing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Dick. <laughs> we got off topic again. <laughs> so yeah, we, we take different route than most people because our humor can be a little bit off color sometimes. And we do try and watch it when there are kids around, but everybody seems to like it because, you know what, life's too short and uh, a, a, the occasional joke that's a little off color isn't going to hurt anybody. Who doesn't love Dick? Right, exactly. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, people 
Um, just what the atmosphere that we create. We like to keep it loose. We have that jokey environment. We're always filming new YouTube content while you know making videos, doing the photo shoots. I like to think of Viera Comics as the place you could go where everybody knows your name and you're always glad that you came. It's very similar to Cheers, I feel, with the environment. Uh, it's really snowballed over the course of the past couple of years where people can just you know, feel free to joke around about whatever they want or if they want to even bring their own beer to a late night party that we throw. You know, it turns into that type of social event that artists can come in, work on their newest pieces, um, work on new sketches, or even do commissions for the attendees of such events. Really, we have something for everybody. Yeah, we, we've uh, cultivated a community that includes a lot of local artists. Actually, one of them is in the audience today, Brad Scott Art. Brad Scott Art on Instagram. Um, he is a, a great friend and a supporter of both the shop, the YouTube channel, and uh, we try and help him out as much as we can too. But um, if you ever come on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, there's a more than 100% chance you'll be seeing him there. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sundays and Saturday afternoons have kind of become our time to just throw a movie on when we're there and a few of us gather and we watch a movie. It's, kind of, it's fun, it's a clubhouse. Um, we're very fortunate that we have that. Like I said, not everybody's gonna, not every comic shop is gonna have that environment. Some of them can be a little stuffier than others, um, and some of them aren't as mom and popish as ours is. Everybody, like I'm there to greet every customer that comes in. I'm there to greet every cosplayer that comes in. If I'm not there, uh, Brad or Jason are doing that. Uh, Jason has a full time job, but on the weekends when we have events, he's there and he treats it like it's his place. And I'm always very grateful for that. Um, yeah, so. Besides the fact that um, Jason is doing all this stuff, he also is working full time and, and still doing all this stuff. So, so there's no excuses as far as time goes when it comes to, if you're passionate about cosplay, you should be able to work, work on Facebook or Instagram to grow your little community and, uh, and try and get more people involved. Yeah, I would say the biggest key to success with building the community is persistence. Having at least one post daily on each, each of your social media platforms to keep the momentum going and to keep subscribers or followers um, coming in and then sharing your content then. And then with increased momentum, when people see all the fun that you're having with your cosplay events, with your cosplay communities, um, then other people, they're gonna wanna reach out to you and join. You'll get those messages from people. Okay, how do we get involved with this? Like, what events are you going to next? Are you going to MegaCon Tampa? What's uh, next on your agenda for the month of October? Or you could even get invited to do partnerships with other cosplayers. Um, maybe if you want to do some traveling then, if you're fortunate enough to say, maybe get invited to New York Comic Con, like people start reaching out to you about wanting to collaborate on different photo shoots or video projects, or even appear at their cosplay booth then at some point. Sure. Um, you know, those platforms are very key to getting those continued opportunities. And, you know, there will be some discouraging moments. There might be some haters that come by, but, you know, it's kind of like you're playing a video game where you know that as you're approaching that boss, you're gonna have those enemies coming to you know, try to distract you from your goal. But you know, those hurdles, every time I come into a hurdle like that, I know that we're about to level up. So try to think of it that way. You know, even if you get some hate, like, you'll overcome it. And it's what you're passionate about doing, you know, engaging in cosplay. Um, if you're combining cosplay and comics or you know, cultivating these community events, you know, it's gonna be worth it putting all those hours into the thing. Because really, if you love it, it's not going to seem like it's a second job then at that point. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're Florida-based here, the, the way to start, if you want to grow it even past your area, is to go start going to some of the other cons in other cities in Florida. There's a ton of them. So that's, that's definitely going to help. I mean, we started in Melbourne. And at the time, we were just thinking Melbourne. And then we started meeting some people in Orlando. And we were like, well, let's try and network more with Orlando. And then uh, South Florida happened. Uh, we invited a very famous uh, cosplayer and her friend Erica Cosplay and JSG Cosplay to our one year event uh, a year and a half ago, a year ago, whatever it was. Um, and they came and we became known in the South Florida just, just by doing that and meeting, networking. We were fortunate she would have to be a very popular cosplayer. Um, but even if it wasn't, it, it, it still helps. And then we started deciding to go to other countries. We went to Raleigh, North Carolina, Boston, and now I look at my friends list on Facebook and Instagram, and sometimes I'll see this person and I'll be like, how do I know them again? And then I'll, I'll think, I was like, North Carolina, oh yeah. So, you know, we, we have a pretty big network now. It's all up and down the East Coast, and it took a while to do. It took over a year. 
Um, and I can only imagine if we did that in a year, where we'll be next year and the following year. So it, it, it's definitely doable to grow a community from a small spot to a large spot. We're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And then all those new connections that we've made over the course of the past several months doing all the traveling to these other conventions out of state, it's been keeping us pretty busy even still. Like we're, we've uh, been fortunate enough to collaborate with um, some of those connections. Like we did a podcast the other day with our friend from Boston that we made under the Cape podcast. You know, just set up our equipment one night at the comic book shop and just went to town. You know, very fun time. And we're, we'll certainly be planning some more photo shoots and different cosplay uh, meetups uh, with some of these other connections when we return to events like Rally Supercon or even, you know, Megacon Orlando next year. We're already planning out different uh, flash mobs, meetups. And then if you see our YouTube channel, we do a bunch of different cosplay uh, meetup events. We actually have one going on today, uh, a Batman and villain flash mob taking place here in the lobby. Yesterday we had a Spider-Verse flash mob taking place where so, there's yeah. a bunch of singing with pop songs, a little bit of dancing and such. Yeah. Um, really, you know, it's just a great avenue for people to congregate and have a great time while representing their favorite characters then. And then another benefit of participating in these videos is we'll reach out to, you know, as many people as we can, um, as we can identify once the video gets posted and then plug their Instagram pages, their social media pages, Facebook pages um, in the video description. So we like to give back by giving that avenue for promotion for other cosplayers to get known. And then, yeah, they can feel free to reach out to us for future collaborations too. We encourage that. Sure. And as your group grows, you, your, um, your reach and your networking will grow too. Yesterday, um, we were doing a Marvel Day mostly as a group. But then um, another group reached out to us and said, we want to do some Justice League stuff. So I said to Jason, should I uh, dress up as DC that day and I'll network with them while we're, uh, the other guys are doing. And we did that and it was wildly successful. I, I joined a DC cosplay group for about an hour or two yesterday and we had a great photo shoot. I was dressed as Shazam and I met about 10 new cosplayers that I had never known before that we'll probably have a reach to now and probably be able to network with and maybe uh, collaborate with. It was exciting and we actually ended up uh, winning a, a prize at the at the cosplay contest as best uh, DC uh, group. Uh, so mm -hmm. that was very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And then the entire time I was following them around filming this Justice League uh, meetup and different shenanigans between the different characters. It was almost like a Justice League reunion with them catching up on fun memories and then inevitably them talking trash to each other, Batman v Superman, yet again. <laughs> and then filmed the cosplay uh, contest and some of the shenanigans that transpired on the stage. Um, so yeah, um, being able to make a video based on that, like people really enjoy seeing it, especially you know when they participate. Or if they're a newcomer to the convention, then, okay, how do I get involved with this? Let me now create my own cosplay. I want to meet groups like this. I want to be part of videos like this. And then the convention organizers also appreciate the promotion as well. Um, one of our flash mobs, we filmed it last year at um, Megacon Orlando. It crossed over 2 million uh, views a couple months ago. And that was like one of the most uh, fun flash mobs, the parties that we had. And you know, people still reach out to me about that. The cosplayers have participated like, okay, when's the next one taking place now? Yeah. You know, I've been pl uh, promoting this like crazy here. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions? Curiosities? Um, yeah, I have a couple actually. <laughs> Not like that, but it's funny. We were we were talking about this last night actually. Like we should start. We should start a, a cosplay oh, yeah. group. We just said that like last night, and I didn't know you guys were actually going to talk about that. And I was like, I wasn't sure you know what exactly you were going to talk about here today. Yeah, it's just funny. It's just ironic. So where where are you based out of Tampa? Jacksonville. Oh, Jacksonville. Okay, yeah. cool. Oh, so you're not that far from us in Melbourne. No, uh, Melbourne? Yeah. Uh, 191. Okay. Cool. Vieira. Yeah. 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 That's like a two-hour drive. We definitely. You guys should start a group, and then we'll start collaborating with you. Definitely. So we have a lot of events at the comic shop. We'll give you the card and info. Cool. Um, but yeah, no, and we can even help you grow that too. We definitely want to get get to the Jacksonville area, and, and now you're you're going to help us be our conduit. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and we've always been wanting an Iron Fist to, to join our group, so. I got, I got some work to do on it. That looks good, man. Yeah, it looks awesome. Good. Yeah. Awesome. It looks really good. It looks really good on a camera, and it'll look good on a video if we ever film with you. So, don't, don't, looks good. It's my first 
second comic convention and the first time I dressed up. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, everything's pretty much hand stitched and I was just, <laughs> I was like, I probably would be the worst looking Iron Man there. Nah. The only one, so I was the best looking Iron Man there. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just, but uh, it was a, the Deadpool day J- Jason referenced, um, th- there was a reason why he was the only cosplayer dressed up, because I wasn't cosplaying at the time. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I had one cosplay, and that was a Green Lantern, and it was store-bought, it was a Halloween costume. It was cool, I mean, I still used it up until recently. Um, it, it served the purpose for what we were doing. And, but that's what happens, when you start and other cosplayers are gonna be wanting to join you, tell them. It doesn't have to be perfect. You start out with whatever you can afford, you want to go and spend thirty bucks at Spirit after Halloween's over on a costume, and and uh, use that, buy two or three costumes, and use those throughout the course of the year. Do that. Nobody's ever gonna judge you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about fun. Cosplay's supposed to be fun. Yeah. For years, actually, the first three years after I started the YouTube channel, my only cosplay was Heath Ledger Joker, just because I put so much money into that suit. I probably went over like the value, you know, got like full money's worth of yeah. men's sum with that costume. It's like so worn down. Yeah. Uh, but then after doing a, you know, more events and then the YouTube uh, channel becoming more successful and then um, getting um, increased revenue on a monthly basis, that then it opens up more opportunities for um, those upgrades then, or if you want to just increase your array of cosplay characters. Um, in the past two years alone, we've drastically increased the number of um, costumes that we both own. Mm. Probably they're over 30 combined, I'd say. Easy. Maybe more. Yeah, probably at <laughs> yeah. this time. I don't even, I couldn't even, if you, I would be hard pressed to list all my characters at this point because I have so many, even some like minor ones that yeah. I do. Yeah. And I mean, we're always here. looking at um, the different trends or upcoming movies, different cosplay characters that inspire us, or that would be fun to do, or ones to make fun of. Or the comic books, they also you know, can be influential um, with picking these different characters that we want to do now. Um, actually, Flashpoint is a really good example. So our friend Brad, he does Nightwing as well now. And this hasn't been done before, but he debuted a Flashpoint Nightwing a couple weeks ago at Batman Day. It had never been done before because there, there's only in the comics uh, Flashpoint Batman, but yeah, yeah. him creating his own character you know, ha- gives a lot of liberty to you know c- cultivate his backstory now. How you know how is Flashpoint Nightwing different from uh, regular Dick in the real sure. world? Yeah. So at Batman Day we had White Dick and Black Dick. <laughs> <laughs> There's something for everybody. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. How many of your costumes are like homemade, and how many are bought? Do you have a lot of most of our stuff is bought between yeah. us, so that that we're not a good judge for that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but there's people that take great pride in making their own costumes and, and we respect the hell out of them. Um, yeah. If I had more time on my hands, just because um, all my time gets eaten up by uh, the real full-time job and then doing the different cosplay events and especially the YouTube channel, uh, if I had more time on my hands, I would certainly love to make uh, my own uh, suits, but yeah, just for the sake of time, I yeah. just usually buy them from either Etsy sellers or eBay sellers or you know good sellers on um, AliExpress. Sir, yes. Can you talk about how, as you build your community, you'll meet people that make and trade and borrow to help build costume and wardrobes and stuff? Yeah, you, through the community, through growing your community, you're going to, the people that are, are crafting cosplay and they're builders and they build the foam builds and they sew and stuff, they're all going to flock. They're going to be the first people you meet, usually, because uh, a lot of them want to show off what they've built or made or a lot of them want to make, make, meet potential customers too. So that's gonna be a big part of uh, whatever group you create and they're always super valuable people to know because if they can't do it for you, they'll at least maybe have a good idea of where you can get something. Yeah, and then these conventions are a great avenue to meet those people as well. Um, a lot, some of them will have a booth available, but if not, like um, just by chance, if you meet a cosplayer and they do indicate, yeah, you know, I'm considering making an Etsy page, you know, keep an eye on them. I have a cosplay friend up in Toronto who has been making her own costumes for years and now she's on the platform of Etsy. She just opened her shop um, last month and it's very impressive stuff. And you know, I'm certainly planning to help promote um, her shop to get the word out further to any cosplayer interested in those characters that she'll uh, cultivate, create. Yeah, and uh, it, it's funny, as you, as you become more involved in the cosplay, the group is gonna help make you wanna cosplay more. The community is going to help make you want to cosplay more. The events that you create will help you want to cosplay even more. But um, influencers, as far as what you're going to pick and choose, 
um, will be the movies or something, or the TV shows, or and, and a big part of it will also be the comics. We, uh, Jason touched on that earlier. Um, sometimes you'll see a fl somebody just pick, say Flashpoint was their favorite, and so they'll pick some Flashpoint characters, or um, until Flashpoint came along, there were really female Jokers. Martha Wayne was the Joker, and so now you'll see a lot of female Jokers, yep. and it's awesome, it's so cool. So, and then lately, um, the comic covers have been very iconic, especially with a lot of female cosplayers, because uh, um, there's been a lot of variants for Venom uh, symbiotes and things like that. So you're seeing a lot more like Mary Jane symbiote and Black Cat symbiote and this symbiote. Everybody's a symbiote yeah, yeah. now, especially the past two or three months in comics. You know, so that's been influencing a lot of the cosplay. So the pages of comics will influence cosplay. Comics and cosplay go together, m very much so. Um, but uh, I think a lot of the movies are also um, uh, influencing, uh, like, you see more Batman, Ben Affleck cosplay than a traditional Batman with a yellow symbol. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, just compared to a few years ago, too, the Batfleck cosplays are far more prominent than Christian Bale cosplays. Um, just people, they typically want to um, do what's trending currently. Um, usually gets more buzz when it's based on, say, Justice League, which is about to be released, uh, versus Dark Knight or Dark Knight Rises. Mm -hmm. yeah, typically the more relevant ones. And then you can do your favorites. I mean, I yeah. honestly, Dick Grayson is one of my favorite characters, and arguably, probably for me, in my head, maybe just as popular and uh, as much of a favorite as Batman is. Um, always liked him, and it took me two years to finally cosplay him. So you know, I just never came around, got to it. But I'm happy I have it now. It's one of my favorite suits. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give the convention later today a whole lot of dick. <laughs> Uh, yesterday, our buddy Matt, he debuted his John Wick cosplay. He's been planning to do that for a couple months, uh, growing out his hair as well as his beard. He was always more drawn to, I want to say, Neo out of the Keanu characters. He's a kind of Keanu lookalike to an extent. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yesterday he was getting stopped like every minute for photos because he just fully embodied uh, John Wick as a character. And we're like, man, like you got to keep this up, man. He's like, well, I might want to do Neo at some point. I'm like, no, no, like this is relevant right now. Yeah. This is badass. Do John Wick. Stick to this. Yeah. If you do Neo, they'll be like, yeah, you know, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But it's old. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't even that good. <laughs> it was at the time. Yeah, at the time. At the time, it's not one of those movies that, like, is a cult classic. It's just kind of, at the time, it was mind blowing. The first one. And then the other two were like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully, uh, um, when you're out there and you cosplay, listen to what the people say. I mean, I, I, uh, Doctor Strange may not be my most favorite cosplay, but when I wear it at a convention, I get stopped a lot because there aren't a ton of Doctor Strange cosplays. Uh, Shazam definitely is not one of my favorite cosplays, but I got stopped like crazy yesterday. I've never seen a Shazam. Those are one as good as your cosplay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, being different helps sometimes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Then um, for the different Spider-Verse meetups, usually I do J. Jonah Jameson for that day, just because no one else typically does that. And he's just a whole lot of fun getting to shout, Parker, you hooligan! <laughs> like, uh, it's, you know, it's very rarely seen. It's just a way to stand out, just identifying those characters that you know you can resonate with and other people will perceive you as being um, a good embodiment of that character. Um, you know, he's one of my favorite characters to play just because you know, it's so outrageous. And if I'm having like a stressful, Week all takes is five minutes in character shouting, you know, menace! Get that menace! We need some good headlines for me to, you know, rebalance and feel a lot better about life again. For sure, yeah. I, I bet you feel better right now. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we have a lot of fun when we cosplay too. Not everybody cosplays and becomes the character. We do. That's not necessarily the route for everybody, but we have fun. Uh, you know, like. Becoming that character, uh, embodying, uh, being the embodiment of that character, and just screwing around. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the fun of it for us. Yep. Yeah. Favorite uh, pastime. <laughs> I realized yesterday, I was I walked outside, walking across the street, down the street, and somebody on the other side of the street was like, "Hey, is that Danny Rand?" <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, yep, it's me." He's like, "That's not what you're supposed to say." I didn't really hear him, so I was like, "What?" He goes, "Never mind." So it took me a second, and I was like, no, I'm the Immortal Iron Fist. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's it. So now, after that, every time somebody's like, hey, what's up, Danny? You're like, no, I'm the Immortal Iron Fist. You know? so, awesome. 
there are some characters that I do. Um, so like, I will get into certain characters, like usually a Batman, Jameson, or a Tony Stark, and never break character. But there are some other characters I do that, you know, like Hawkeye, where I just don't care. Uh, <laughs> that's my, uh, I call it like my casual cosplay, so yeah. But like, it's like an easy day for me. Like yesterday I had to dra drive back and forth from here to Melbourne for an event and then back, so I was exhausted, I wanted to do an easy one. Uh, anyway though, someone came up to me, they're like, hey Clint! And like I look over my shoulder, yeah. like, who are they talking to? <laughs> that was Clint. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I'm Clint. <laughs> That's right, that is his name. <laughs> but but the fact that he didn't care about it was funny because then he was pretending to not give a shit and, and, and <laughs> be, I'm the, I'm the least favorite Avenger. It's yeah. true. <laughs> He's just there. <laughs> I still want to know what happened in Budapest, though. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. And then, and when sometimes because we are in character all the time, we expect others to be in character. I, so I'll walk up to a Star Lord. <laughs> And, and say to him, hey, are you 100% a dick? <laughs> and, and, and he's like, what? <laughs> we came across the Star-Lord on Friday. I was just as Thor at the time, the Ragnarok version. And I ran up to him like, you're a friend from work. <laughs> and he just didn't know how to respond. He was like, what the hell? I think he was drunk. <laughs> that, that particular Star-Lord may have been drunk or stoned, yeah. <laughs> I'm leaning toward the latter. It seemed pretty out of it. But he enjoyed our banter, so that was something. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you'll get a wide range of people um, who are either fully committed to their characters or that you know they yeah. just dress up. But as long as they're having fun, that's it. Yeah. The bottom line is fun. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Are you good? Um, yeah. We definitely need to get in touch, and we want to help you build that community because Jacksonville is uh, going to be a target area for us at some point. So. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna become good friends. I can feel it. Yeah, absolutely. Just All right. like your first event, you had like ten people show up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a good yeah. Yeah, man. And then it'll just keep on growing from there. Just with all the continued uh, promoting across social media platforms, different photos or videos that you guys shoot, then it'll help get the word out even quicker. Then, and then it'll just. You know, meeting a lot more like-minded people. For sure. Well, we definitely want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, we know uh, your time is valuable, and your con time is valuable, so we appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And if there are no other questions at this time, I would like to extend a thank you from our Vera Comics and Make Them Laugh Films team. This has been How to Combine Cosplay and Comics, better now known as How to Build a Cosplay Community. If you guys get the chance, feel free to stop by our booth. We are J5 in the community area. Make them laugh films, can't miss it. You'll see our logo right up above our booth. Again, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much for your support, and we will catch you soon.